going on guys? I got a comment that I found to be very interesting. There's this false narrative that investors make more money than business owners. I'm getting ready to show you proof in black and white that investors do not make more money than business owners. And it was this whole comment like, you're talking about starting a business and miss businesses fail. Well, here's the truth. Most investors like 99% never get to the million dollar mark. Let's go ahead and roll that beautiful bean footage. So I spent hours this morning Googling information about uh, IRAs, 401ks, and brokerage accounts. And the average 60 year old, this is someone who's been in the investing markets for years, has $263,000. Now, that's a significant sum of money, but when you're talking about retirement, when you're talking about you're not having any more income coming in, like I'm gonna tell you something, I am never gonna be officially retired. I am always gonna have income coming in, always. I don't care if I'm 90 years old, I'm gonna have something that's gonna bring in active income. I will never actually just rely on a set sum of money. Now, in theory, if I had $10 million, I could live off that the rest of my life and leave money for my uh, heirs. But for me personally, that whole have a set sum of money, it breeds constriction. It's like, I got this $2 million chunk of cash. And this is one of the reasons our rich journey keeps their YouTube channel going because that's a active source of income because they're in the personal finance niche. I wouldn't be surprised if they get 10 to $20,000 a month. That's one of the reasons they keep that channel going because it's active income and they're not retired because they're full-time YouTubers. But you know, that's just me saying, but go ahead, look at these numbers and you will see 401k and when you get to the Roth IRA, and the Roth is a really special beast because um, this is money you can put away and then pull out tax with the paying no taxes. The average Roth balance of a 60 year old is $93,000. So right now in my garage, I have a greater net worth than the average 60 year old in depreciating assets my Porsche, my BMW, my Mercedes. I have more money tied up in those cars than these people have as their average net worth. So, you know, I keep hearing this stuff and I keep having people coming after me saying businesses fail. No one is talking about most investors fail to get to a million dollars. Like, 90% of investors, 90% of investors, like 99% of investors fail to get to a million dollar um, brokerage account, 401k investment account, whatever you want to call it. 99% fail to get there. But due to the false narrative that investing is such this big thing, and I'm about to say something. Once again, it is smart to have your money working for you. But here's the thing, and this is something that's very, very important. Your money cannot work as hard for you as you can work for yourself. There is no comparison. That 200,000 I dropped on two cars, I made that in one month. So let's go ahead and look at this. Uh, at the height, when my business was humping, I was doing about almost 300K a month. So one month of active income running a business was bigger than the average 401k Roth IRA combined. 
you can combine their 401k and their Roth IRA, and I still made more money in one month than they have over decades of investing. Decades. So keep, you know, because I'm like, forget it. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to say it. Forget about investing. Forget about investing. You don't make enough money to significantly invest. It's just like, once again, it's better to have $263,000 and be 60 years old than to not have it. I will admit that. But walk with me. Let's take a little journey. Let's say at the age of 25, you found this YouTube channel and you got addicted. You became, you watched all the videos and then you, at the age of 25, started your first business. And in the first three years were kind of rocky because you, you made money, you lost money, you kind of went back and forth. And by the time you were 30, you had figured it out and your business was humping. And you had gotten to an income of $250,000 at the age of 30. Your business grosses a million dollars a year. But once you start deducting employee salaries and expenses, that's 250,000 that you get to slide in your pocket at the age of 30. And you're, you've been, you know, you've been like, okay. So what you do is you take a hundred K of that 250 to live on, which is like nine, 8,000, about $8,300 per month. That's what you live on. And then you pay your taxes and then you invest a hundred thousand or you invest 80,000. So by the time you are 40, you have a brokerage account over a million dollars. You did that in 10 years. And now guess what? You're only 40. You could work another 20 years if you chose to do so. Let's go ahead and talk about this retirement thing. I have, my plan isn't to retire and sit around and do nothing. That's just not my energy. I am already where I want to be. Where I want to be is I get to do what I want to do with my time. Today, I had lunch with my girlfriend and we're gonna probably have dinner tonight. So I get to do what I wanna do with my time. That's the goal, to get to the point where you have full control of your time and you have money to enjoy life. That's the goal, that's where you're trying to get. This whole just, I, I don't know what's going on with this current generation. Uh, the word lazy comes to mind but it's deeper than that. It's way deeper than that. I have seen many videos where people were talking about opting out of the American dream. And I'm about to tell you, if at the age of 25, you start a business and you stick with it, and by the time you get to 30, you figure some stuff out, the American dream is easy. It's easy. You wanna know why? Because you have income velocity and you have income surplus, which is what most of the people who are trying to invest never get there. They never get there. This is why they have to live pathologically cheap. Uh, I was watching this video of this guy who retired at 39 and he's living in, the house was average or let's say below average. And the guy was 39 and he was living on $39,000 a year. His wife was still working. Her goal was to retire in two years. And I, his income dictates how he lives. His income dictates where he lives. His income dictates everything. And the guy, every time he comes to make a purchase, like I spend money on things I need. Like once again, to be reckless and to be frivolous with money, I'm not advocating that. But this camera, that camera, and this drone was 12,500 bucks and I spent that without blinking an eye. See, I have money to make investments when the opportunity arises 
because I have liquidity. I am not an investor. Most investors could not come up and once again, check me in the comments, but how many investors you know who are not in the top 1% and we'll talk about them in a minute, who could go out and pay cash for a Porsche? Richard Fain can't do it. He can't do it. He makes a good income. He makes good YouTube income, but he cannot pay cash for a force. That's why he's selling his house. That's why he's selling his cars. Because once again, as an entrepreneur, as someone who knows how to make money, as someone who's made millions of dollars in, a, in, a, in less than a year, I understand the power of a business. And the power of a business is greater than the power of investments. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the big dog investors. Do you know Arthur Blank? Because I did not know until recently that Home Depot was a dividend paying stock. And Arthur Blank owns enough stock where Home Depot pays him $70 million a year in dividends. $70 million a year in dividends. Now, Arthur could have never bought that much stock. He couldn't have bought it, but because he was a founder of the Home Depot, and this is the thing, Arthur Blank only owns 1.5% of Home Depot stock, and Bernie Marcus owns less than that. So his stock position pays him 70 million a year in dividends. And here's the thing, how did Arthur Blanks become a big dog investor? He started a business. Elon Musk is looking at paying nine or 11 billion in taxes. Because essentially selling of his Tesla stock, which I thought was a really good move for him to sell his stock when he did, because I feel that the price of all stock is about to crash. Um, the nine billion that he gets to keep is money that his family could live on for the next 10 generations. Easily, easily. We're talking the next 300 years, easily. How did Elon Musk get to that position? Oh, he started a business. He started a business. So all of you who keep all of this investment stuff and like, once again, put down how much money you have investments because this false narrative that just pisses me off is investors, investors, and get your money and get you, get you a few rentals. Like if you had three rental properties with a mortgage on it, you're only going to cash flow 150, 200 bucks a month, like $600 a month. That ain't going to change your life. You know, and you have all of these people putting out this investment advice because number one, let's go back to the top 1%. Elon Musk, how did Elon Musk buy $1.5 billion worth of Bitcoin? Because he had a business. If you look at the biggest investors in Bitcoin, except for the people who got in really early, they're business owners. All the time, when you go back to it, they're business owners. They're business owners. And one of the things that I find to be patently interesting is the average person doesn't have the brain power, like, to crunch the numbers. If all of these people are getting rich from investing, where are they? I have said this before and I'm going to say it again. I like Dave Ramsey, I think his basics are good, but this whole notion that the average person can invest money and become a millionaire is fundamentally false because the average person doesn't have enough income to invest in the stock market to get to a million dollars. They don't have it. This is why, as I showed you, all of these 60 year olds only have 263,000. And this is what I said, and this is the average. Sure, you'll have some people with a million dollar or $2 million or $3 million account. And I guarantee you, 
if you look back, you're going to see that they had a high income. I guarantee it. I am willing to bet $10,000 that anyone that has an investment portfolio of three, four, five, six million dollars before age 50, they had a really large income. Your income is a lever. So we got all these people in here talking about, hey, invest, 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 and invest, and invest. Invest what? You won't make no money. What are you gonna invest? And like I said, if you would invest in yourself, if you would take a chance on yourself, because I did some more research, you hear this notion that the average business fails. And here's what's really interesting. The average business fails within 10 years. Within 10 years. So based upon the numbers, you have a easier shot at becoming a millionaire by starting a business than you do with investing. Numbers, fact check me, go ahead and do the numbers. If you start a business that is successful for 10 years, it's gonna give you the income to actually become an asset-based investor more readily than a job. Unless you have a job like Tim Cook, who's a billionaire because of his Apple stock options, or the, the uh, CEO of Google, who's worth 600 million because of his stock options. But wait a minute, there's like maybe 1,000 jobs around the world as a CEO. No, that's not true. There's, uh, there's about 9,000 companies in the S&P 500, in the New York Stock Exchange. So all of those companies have CEOs who make seven figures or close to it. Every last one of them. So there's like 9,000 jobs that can make you a millionaire. 9,000 out of 30 million companies, 30 million companies. So if you're going to put in there, because one of the things that I see in this is a fundamental truth, a lie told a thousand times soon is believed to be the truth. And that's the lie of investing. The lie of investing is people are like, oh, I'm an investor. I'm gonna live off my investments. I see YouTube after YouTube video. How much money does it take to live off dividends? It takes a lot. They're putting up these videos to get you to watch them, to get you all gassed up, to make you feel that you can leverage a little bit of money into a big payday. It ain't gonna happen. Men lie, women lie, numbers don't lie. So please, Put out a study, put a link showing me where are all of these stock market millionaires, because it ain't that many. Compared to the number of people who are invested in the stock market due to their 401k, due to their Roth RA, whatever they have, whatever kind of investments, the fundamental truth is the majority of them are not millionaires. The majority of them. Yet I can go to my personal collection of friends and a lot of them are millionaires, but they're all business owners. I don't have one friend who's quote, an investor, who's a millionaire. I don't know, not one, but I know people who have businesses. I have a friend <clears throat> who has a job. He makes about 4 million a year from his job and he invests in real estate. He is his own bank. He has enough money to buy a house he has enough money to do the renovations without going to the bank to borrow. And we'll talk about his strategy because in the beginning he did everything self-funded. And then he started to go to the bank and get loans because this allowed him to double his production because he had enough money to pay cash and then he would get a loan <clears throat> and then he would double his renovation projects. So he, he made more money. 
but because he had enough money to fund the foundational aspects of his real estate business, he made a lot of money. I remember one time he had six houses um, renovated and none of them were selling and he was just sitting on them. And this is the first time I ever seen him sweat because he's saying, you know, fortunately for me, <clears throat> I can pay the bank back its money and it doesn't alter my lifestyle. But he's saying, you know, cause these were like million dollar houses and I think it was like five. So he was paying like $30,000 a month. Now he made three or 4 million. So he was able to easily pay <clears throat> the bank his money, but he felt it. He's like, I'm, I'm feeling this because 30,000, I don't care if you make a million dollars a year, $30,000 a month is a lot of money. It's a lot of money. And he was starting to feel it. And fortunately the houses start selling and then he made, was made hold and he got out of that. But once again, don't come to me talking about this investor stuff because 99% of you will never be a millionaire due to investments. 99% of you will never become a millionaire due to investments. And the reason is simple. You don't make enough money. You don't make enough money. It's not a lack of effort. It's, it's not a, it's not a smart thing or a mindset thing. It's a money thing. Like me, I invested, showed you, showed you the receipt, showed you the title, showed you the process. I spent $400,000 getting a car rental business off the ground. Uh, many of these investors here on YouTube couldn't do that. They couldn't do that. They, they, they couldn't do that. They, they can't do it because they don't have the money. They may have stocks or they may have real estate, but they don't have liquidity. And this is what a business will give you. It will give you liquidity. Like the video I made the other day, like if I wanted to go to the bank today and pull out hundred K, I couldn't cause the bank's not going to let me pull out hundred K. They're not. Most I can pull out would maybe be 25,000, but let's say the bank had the cash and I wanted to go write myself a check for a hundred thousand dollars and pull it out and just flex on YouTube and do the, the phone brick, the phone, the money phone, like, Hey, you know, what's up money? I'm talking to you and do that ridiculous stuff. And I can do that every day this week. If the bank actually had the money, the bank, I'm, I'm telling you, you cannot cash a hundred thousand dollar check. And when you're talking about a million, I had a friend who was going to buy this boat and the owner of the boat wanted cash and he sold this boat for 1.9 million. And my friend had the money. This is what my friend had to do. It took my friend, not one, not two, but three weeks to get that 1.9 million in cash. Took him three weeks. And he got most of the money the last week because the bank, because essentially this is what the bank will tell you. Like, okay, kind of, they will give you a range because they don't want it to be known that they have this much cash in the branch. So they will give you kind of like a range, like, okay, we'll order the money and you could come in between such and such date. And that last week he went in there and he was able to write the check and get the money. And he carried the money in the duffel bag, duffel bag boy, right? And he went there and he is, the boat was in Florida. And this, this gets real interesting. He flew to Florida with 1.9 million in the duffel bag. And when he went through the um, x-ray machine, they pulled him to the side. And fortunately, my friend who is not dumb, he had a letter and he had all of the receipts of pulling that money out the bank. So they gave him his money. They didn't seize his money. And he got back on the plane and he went to Florida and he met the owner of the boat, paid him 1.9 million in cash. And I'm figuring out like the owner of this boat, if you go to the bank, <laughs> with 1.9 million in cash to deposit, uh, it's gonna be interesting.
because they're going to be looking at y'all kind of sideways because they're because there, there's laws that says we must know our customer. You just cannot walk up to a bank unless you have a business that has been known to be putting in huge infusions of cash. A lot of banks was like, we, we ain't taking that because they don't want to be involved in the money laundering or criminal activity. So uh, my friend said, what are you going to do with the money? And the dude said, I am moving to Brazil and I'm moving to Brazil tomorrow. So they signed up with a title to the boat and everything. And the dude got on the plane with his 1.9 million and went to Brazil. And uh, the dude was like, he said the guy was like 70. So I figured he's just going to live off the cash his rest of his life in Brazil. So it, it, it is interesting. But once again, look at the moves of the so-called investors on YouTube. They're selling their houses. They're selling their cars because they don't have any liquidity. Yet me, once again, I took a $400,000 L. And what did I do? I moved, this place is more expensive than my house. It's more expensive than my house because I have, uh, it's about 1,200 a month more expensive than my house. And I gotta pay for parking. I gotta pay for parking. So one of the things, because like as a business owner who has literally seen several hundred thousand dollars coming to their bank account in a month. I can tell you, and let's talk about that. Um, three months at the height of my business gave me more money than all of these investors. Because here's the thing, investments bring in money. And you know, if you're like author blank, you can get that kind of stock position. Yeah, you can make a lot of money. You can make millions of dollars. But how did Arthur Blank get that much Home Depot stock? He was a founder. There was no way he could have bought that. That would have cost billions of dollars to buy that much stock. Billions with a B. So if you want to come in here, because yeah, this is this is the Institute of Economic Thought. And this is the flagship channel of the House of Pain. I did change the name and the flagship channel of the corporate game. And it, this is about starting businesses so we can make that money. I, I'm like, I'm telling you, if you start a business that is successful, you will make more money than the average investor because the average investor doesn't have the financial wherewithal to make significant investments. Like you could start a small business that literally makes you 150,000 a year. That's more money than these investors are making. I have shown you guys proof. I'm not selling my Porsche. I'm not getting rid of stuff. I'm not. You wanna know why? Cause I don't have to and going into this tenure. Cause I have a plan for this, uh, a plan for this tenure window to, um, do something significant with my life. Because once again, it is a fallacy that you believe that you could become an investor. And there's a bunch of lying ass YouTube channels that are hyping people up. Like I find the most humorous channels are the dividend stock investment channel. I find them to be the most humorous because there's one guy who I found out he had dividend stock, $600,000 worth of dividend stock and pays him five, almost $6,000 a month. And I found out that they were really risky. It was really risky what he was doing, which means, you know, the higher the yield, the higher the risk. So at any moment, this could collapse on him and destroy those five or $6,000 a month dividends. Now, one of the things that I love about the investment community and the dividend investment community is a lot of these guys think they're smart. And I'm about to say something. I found a new channel, uh, Be The Story. This guy is a day trader and he makes money, but the number of people, the humble trader, she makes a lot of money. The number of people 
who are successful traders making just 100,000 a year is actually quite small. And you wanna know why these people are making that money? There's something different about them. They're not average. They're either really smart, they're really disciplined, and I know enough about investing because investing is kind of like running a business. You got to have the right mindset. You got to have the right mental energy. Like whenever I'm having like a bad day or something emotional happens, I have a rule. I don't make important decisions when I'm in that state because typically the decision is going to be wrong. I just don't make decisions. And as a day trader, you're making those kind of decisions every day that you trade. So you emotionally have to be healthy and strong. And the average person, like my eye, I saw so many comments during the controversy, uh, my eye was much worse. It's just something I wake up and it's red. I can still see, and I saw people, you need to see the copter, man, maybe you need to take a break. Maybe there's something with your heart and all this other stuff. And I've had broken blood vessels in my eye all my life. I just wake up and bam, my eye's red. Doesn't affect my vision. And I had people who were so hung up on that. These people who were tripping on my eye could not be day traders because they're so easily distracted. I'm gonna tell you something, and it's gonna be kind of strange, but I'm gonna share this with you. Years and years ago, I was fucking around. And I was fucking around with this chick who later told me she had gonorrhea. I never had any symptoms, but you know what I did? Since I worked in the medical facility and I had access to all of the stuff. So I went to the pharmacy and got what I needed. I got the antibiotic and I just uh, put it in my thigh and squeezed it in prophylactically, just in case I had it. And I refrained from having sex with anyone for two weeks. Now, how many of you could have taken, and it was a uh, trobomycin. How many of you could have taken a big ass needle, jammed it in your thigh, pushed, how many of you could have did that? I did it without even blinking. I was just like, boom. I am not, you know, if I got this stuff, I'm not giving it to nobody. So I never got tested, but I would have hate, I would have hated to have given somebody something like that. So I did what was responsible because I had access and I just put it in my thigh. A lot of you would punk out because you know how I know? Because I used to work in the medical clinic and I had to give people these shots and I saw all kinds of reactions. I had people faint, I had people pass out, I had people throw up, all at the sight of a needle. So the average person doesn't have the mental strength to get rich, whether in the stock market, whether in business. I was watching a video by Graham Stephan and his coffee business is in trouble. And I actually said that it was going to fail before because Graham Stephan is not an entrepreneur. He's a YouTuber. He does well on YouTube, but anything outside of YouTube, he's not going to do that well. I know that because um, I, I pretty much criminal minds profile this dude. And one of the reasons his business is kind of in trouble is he refuses to raise it. He doesn't want to raise his prices. Now, if it was me, I wouldn't be selling my coffee for 12 bucks a bag. I'd be selling it for 20. Now you want to know why? Because there are people who would pay that. I would sell it for 20, 25. I would go from just being a regular brand of coffee, I would go to being a premium brand of coffee where I can get those margins. Made that decision, boom, like that. But since Graham is somewhat of a wuss, he's somewhat of a pussy, his business is literally gonna collapse. It's literally, because they're, they're not making money. And this is one of the things he has, because he makes so much money from YouTube, that he can do something like this for fun and he doesn't have to make money. But any business that I get into, I am making money or I'm out that business. Exit the car rental business. I was generating revenue, but I wasn't making money. I wasn't gonna stay in this money. 
And this is something that my car rep told me, which cracked me up. He said, a lot of people didn't want to cut the cars off. I was cutting cars off, 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 off. Bring, hey, the car won't start. Oh my goodness. We'll do this, leave the key in the door and I'll have it towed. I'm so sorry this happened. I would cut that car off in a heartbeat because I ain't trying to make no friends. I'm trying to get paid. So once again, Graham is a little pussy because if he would do it correctly, but he doesn't know how. He doesn't know how. He has all these friends in the industry, but he doesn't know how. Because that brand, that coffee brand could be something totally different and this is something that I found to be interesting. They don't want to be in stores. If they got to a wholesale model, we're talking millions of dollars per month, millions. But once again, they're doing a specialized coffee and it's hard to get the coffee. So that business inherently has a lot of flaws and issues because it's a supply chain issue, it has a cost structure issue. And I'm just sitting there like, you know, immediately, if it was me, I wouldn't be selling for 12 bucks a bag. I'd be selling it for 20, 25 bucks a bag from the jump. That's what the price would have been. And I would have been, and he's not aggressively marketing the business because he really doesn't know how. You know, they, they get to run some Instagram ads and stuff like, see, this is one of the things. Graham is a pussy. He, he really is a pussy. And he doesn't know how to be a, because to be a business owner, you need to have that killer instinct. You need to know when they're down, hey, take them out. Knockout punch. He doesn't have that instinct because he's a pussy. But once again, you and that's another one who gives a lot of fundamentally false advice. Retire before 30. You know the number of people who make enough money that can retire for 30 is like maybe, maybe seven, eight percent of the country that make that kind of money early in life. So the advice that most of these YouTube channels give out can only benefit a really small group of people. Really can. So once again, check out my math. I have shown you. So next time you come in there talking about investing, put in how much your portfolio is worth and how long you've been investing. Don't be coming at me with this investing nonsense because I know better. I will probably never be an investor like, let me, let me tell you um, how, like I said, I have no plans of never ever working, to stop working. I mean, I'll be 90 years old and I'll be doing something to have some active income coming in. Because I just cannot sit and rely on a chunk of money. Now, let's say I played the lottery and won 500 million. Uh, you know what I would do with that money? I would go out and take the majority of it, like 490 million and buy apartment complexes instantly I, I i wouldn't even have to think about what i would do with that money because with that kind of money i would be getting millions per month in rent millions once again i live on about eight thousand dollars a month so i could easily live on millions and go ahead take that money park it in the apartment complexes and create perpetual income for the next 10 generations. That's what I would do. And then I would live it up a little bit. I live it up a little bit. Because right now, even though I make a lot of money, I have constraints. I would never buy a 20 or $30 million mansion. I, I just can't afford that. I can't afford that because that's, that's more money than I have cash and the mortgage on a $30 million mansion, you put 20% down, that's gonna be uh, six, seven million, and then your 23 million mortgage, 5,000 per million. So that's gonna be like 115, 120,000 a month mortgage payment, plus carrying cost. I can't do that. And honestly, I wouldn't want to do it. I, I can also say if I had the means and I don't, if I had the means, I wouldn't do it. I just wouldn't do it. And if I wanted to flex super hard, I can, I can find it. I can put myself in that position where I would have the $20 million mansion. 
I could have the Porsche and all this other stuff. And then I would be um, 115,000 per month for the mortgage. The electricity got to be like 1500 and the water and stuff. So I would be running about 150,000 a month just for that house. And that would consume the majority of my money. So I would be living paycheck to paycheck. I would have a $20 million mansion, $30 million mansion, but I would be living paycheck to paycheck. And I would be forced to make decisions. Like right now, like I just took the last five months off and I really didn't care. See, that, that's one of the things you get to do as a business owner. And um, that wouldn't have been in the cards because I would be forced to consistently keep that 150, 150 plus per month. Oh, also taxes. So I could pull that off, but it would be tight. It would be tight. Um, like I like my life to be comfortable. Like my bills don't press me at all. My bills are like, I pay my bills quite easily. I like that. I don't want to be in a situation where I am pressed, where I am struggling. And to think, to be living in a $30 million house and be struggling, that's crazy when you think about it and articulate that loudly. But that, I, I just wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. But guys, once again, um, we're getting ready to get to training. I'm going to probably start it off the uh, middle of March. And, um, we're going to do home economics first because one of the things that I'm seeing is that people don't know how to crunch numbers. They don't know how to do analysis because there are so many people who believe in the lie. It is an absolute lie that investors make more money than business owners. Being an investor sounds very sexy. It sounds very hip. It sounds very hedgy. It sounds very now. But the truth of the matter is the average investor can't hold a candle to the average business owner. And I'm talking about people who just make 150,000. I ain't even talking about people who make my kind of money or more than my kind of money. I am in the 1%. I'm in the 1%. And to be in the 1%, you need to do like 450 a year or more. I'm in the 1%. But do I spend 1% money? No. Like my yearly expenses are probably going to come up to about maybe 100K, which is well within my means, well within my means. And if I get married, and this is what's funny, if I get married, you know, my expenses would not create, would not go up that much. That's what's funny. If I were to get married, my expenses would hardly budge, would hardly budge because I'm living a very luxurious life. If I was to get married, my expenses would not go up that much, maybe an additional thousand a month. And that would be life insurance and that would be health insurance and some other stuff. That's it. It really wouldn't change a lot because it is built to bring someone in. That's why I have all this disposable cash. So that's all I got for you guys. Uh, I'm gonna probably work on that email today to let the people in the corporate toolbox and the um, corporate papers know what's going on. And we're gonna get into this live training. So that's all I got for you guys. Hopefully you heard me. Hopefully you understood me. And I will see you in the next one.